Hey, it's your boy, Sergeant Hooked on Heroes. So we are talking about today, um, Avatar Sentai, Don Brothers, episode 28. Uh, if you notice, what's this right here? What's, what are we, what's going on here? Uh, that would be my brand spanking new uh, Blue Yeti Snowball microphone. Um, gone are the days of the shit tier quality audio that I had before that was just the microphone's laptop, and now I have this crisp quality audio. Um, <laughs> so still trying to like upgrade things here and there, um, especially because of the podcast. Um, Tensions and Homies is going pretty well. Um, last week we uh, had our first guest, right, Squall? Yeah. Uh, if you didn't check that out, definitely check that out. Um, and uh, this week is going to be uh, just Frankie and I talking about nostalgia, how it can kind of be a disease, and also to please let Mighty Morphin Power Rangers MMPR die. Um, but anyway, uh, that's coming up uh, on the channel. It'll be a live stream tomorrow at 7.30 um, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, stream links to follow as soon as we start going live. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any ideas for Henshins and Homies, if you guys have some topics you want us to talk about, people you'd like to be on the show, things like that, leave it in the comments. Direct message me on Twitter, YouTube, wherever you want all my socials there. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, but we're talking about Down Brothers, so here we go. Um, episode 28 was pretty good. Um, it's weird that we went back to another like filler type episode. I don't hate that. I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily. But it's odd going from something like last week with Sonoy and him dying... Uh, to what we got for this week, which was still a pretty good episode. So the main plot has to do with Inu Brother, and I am a sucker for anything that's Inu Brother focused. He's so fascinating to me as a character, especially now with this whole dynamic we have on where he has no idea who the rest of the team is, yet he's met all of their, like, civilian identities, basically. They have no idea who he is, and they've only ever met his superhero identity, but they've all met him and know him. It's just really interesting, the dynamic there. I wonder if we're ever going to have it revealed. I'm sure it'll be some big emotional thing. But anyway, he's doing his thing and running away from the cops and blah, blah, blah. And he meets up with this young girl. This young girl um, was basically a model for an artist who painted her picture. She fell in love with him. And now she wants to get that picture back. And we think it's because, oh, she wants to keep it safe. Blah, blah, blah. Well, there's some more meaning and reasoning behind that. So um, this uh, MacGuffin painting, though, kind of becomes a big plot point of the whole episode because Kaito wants it to have at Donboro Cafe, there's an auction um, of this painting, and she wants Inu Brother to come with her to essentially steal it, to try and bid for it, but if not, it doesn't work, then just to steal it. And so, um, clearly she has a strong desire. She becomes, I believe it's a Bioman monster this week, I'm pretty sure, I might be wrong on that, but she does become an Ototsuoki, but we'll get there. Um, so Kajo uh, Black wants it for Donboro Cafe. When we get to, and he sends Haruka and, Sh and Shinichi, which is just like sending the two most, like, absolute one brain one shared brain cell type members on the team to go <laughs> whatever um anyway so they go and then also on top of that uh kiji brother is there unbeknownst to the rest of them uh with a person from his firm his consulting firm who his boss also wants the painting for their firm and so they have those two groups and of course inu brother and, and the girl and so it's this back and forth of trying to outbid each other and randomly haruka tries to bid um nine million kibidango like the one little treats that um momoi taro was eating in one of the episodes a few, a few like a while back i don't know why <laughs> this show is just ridiculous <laughs> but they keep trying of course kiji brother gets uh Tsuyoshi keeps uh getting too amped up and keeps like upping the bib without checking to make sure that was okay to offer that much and his partner keeps on like you calm down no you're gonna you're gonna lose us everything <laughs> so anyway that's the whole plot right there. Um, ends up, uh, I believe, who ends up getting it? I think she does. I'm pretty sure the girl does. Or maybe it goes to somebody else. Anyway, we find out that the um, artist that made the painting had like a protege. And this protege was jealous of the artist. And that he stole the original and that this one is a fabrication. It's a fake one. So she goes in there as a totoki and she takes it. And... Um, we find out that she actually has somewhat control over her Totsuoki form and that she doesn't um, necessarily, like, she can hold herself back from hurting people, which is really interesting to see this, these random little, you know, Monsters of the Week episodes where all of a sudden the person has some direct control over their monster form. It's really interesting, and I really like it overall. Um, so, yeah, so that's really good stuff. Um, uh, let's see here. 
Then the protege guy hires Haruka and Shinichi to protect him um, in the painting or whatever. Because I think somebody else wins it. I want to say somebody else there, maybe Kiji brother, whatever. Um, and so she goes in and steals it. And they're like, uh, like I think Shinichi is asleep. Haruka's not paying attention. And so they go after her because they, they say she's in Hototoki. And actually this episode starts like in media rest, in media's rest with them um, chasing down Indu brother and he's helping the monster. Now we know why. He's helping her get the painting because he really does believe that she really wants it and she wants it for a good reason. She kind of does. It reveals throughout the episode that as she was working with this painter, she started falling in love with him but in, and that he kind of reveals similar feelings but that she he's, she's not sure if he actually was in love with her or if he was in love with the idea of painting her. So it's kind of a weird, goofy thing, but I mean, it's still like a fun, interesting concept to work with for an episode, and it still worked for the most part. And honestly, it kind of reflected a lot of things that I think Sonoy and um, Taro were starting to get to with their relationship. They're so gay. They're so absolutely gay, and that's okay, but god dang it, Toei, just let them be gay. <laughs> um, so... Uh, Indu Brother initially fights off the team to protect the girl and the painting, right? And then he sees that she's starting to be too overtaken by her desire, so he helps the team defeat her. Um, it's mainly, um, uh, what is it, um, Don Dorgoku, and, or actually Don Torobolt, and Momotaro that do their, you know, final attacks to destroy it. Becomes big, and we finally get the debut of Toradora Onitaishin. So this is the full team Gatai. And I kind of like it. It's kind of a clusterfuck, but it's a clean clusterfuck, if that makes sense. Like, it's got all the parts of everybody connected and everything. And it's funny because everybody talks when they, you know, when they make the gatai, right? And it's funny because they each, um, again, are talking about they're excited and they think they're going to be a different part on the on the robot, and they're not. Oh I, oh, I hope I'm not the arms again. I bet I'll be something. To, oh, I'm just an arm. And then Kiji Brother is like, oh, yeah, cool. Or I'm, I'm a leg or whatever. Then Kiji Brother is like, cool. Hopefully I'm, uh, I'm on the shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> so it's this nice little touch. Before this, we also got a bit of a ground fight with them, where they do like the ground fights with the mecha. So we got to see Tora, Dora, um, Draganjin, and Don Oni Taijin together ground fight version. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it was overall really cool. Um, they end up def you know creating the combined mecha. You know, like I said, Tora, Dora, Oni Taijin, and defeating the Atotsuoki. And it reveals near the end that she always knew it was a forgery. And she wanted to burn it and the original to kind of push away the memory of, of this painter and that um, she wanted to kind of just keep it pure and like she did have feelings for him but like she just wants to kind of move on and blah 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 and what have you. I think it revealed something about he died too I think so that was part of it too was wanting to like seal away his memory pretty much. Um, yeah the final attack that uh, Mecha does is Dambaro Fantasia and it's all of them working together like an attack from each one of them coming in and just gobsmacking the Hitotsuoki and destroying it. So that was really cool. Um, uh, she was asked to, that's what it was, the girl actually was asked to burn the original by the artist. That was what he, like, he's like, if I, if I, I might be, I might, you know, one, one day might not be around anymore. If that's the case, please get rid of this painting because I just, I, I, I'm not, like, I think he just loved it too much. He thought it didn't... I don't know. There's some, like, egotistical artist blah, blah, blah thing. But again, it was still fun. I don't know. It was goofy, but it still worked as a plot. You know what I mean? Um, but the best, most amazing comedic part comes in near the end where Oni's sister goes back to Don Baroque Cafe and says, Look, I got the paintings. Really? You did? Opens it up. And before, when she was protecting the protege guy, uh, he had uh, she had asked him to paint her and he, he can actually paint and so he tried to but she was doing something like a balloon and she kept moving and so he accidentally painted her with like her face looking like a balloon and um, they, she opens up the painting and that's what the painting is and she has given it to Kaito and he's like I do not accept and he turns around and walks away <laughs> upset that he didn't get his painting <laughs> I just I love the the, the dynamic of him always just, like, trolling the team in general, and usually Haruka, if we're being honest. Um, yeah, so uh, next week looks really interesting. We seem to be getting a funeral for Sonoi, and also on top of that, we're also getting um, uh, some more Don Murasame. He seems to be talking back and forth with Feral Jiro, like Torobolt Jiro, and there's something in the, like, promo about like mother why am i do i feel drawn to this to jiro or to this other you know person or whatever um and i want to say something that looked like they had the armor of sonoy on so i wonder if he's being like 
kind of resurrected, but in like a zombie state or something. I don't really know. Um, and also we see the ninjark sword, which is the sword that Murasama uses. Um, the rest of the team is being like possessed by it. Like it's going to each one of them. And as soon as they touch it, it like possesses them. So really interesting. We're getting some more on him. I'm, I'm really happy about that. Cause I like how even the show poked fun at the fact that they know nothing about Murasame and a few other things. And now we're starting to get that. So very, I love it's very on the nose. Um, but anyway, overall, a really good episode. Um, I probably would give it probably closer to like an eight and a half-ish out of ten, only because it was a bit more of like a lighter episode, and I was expecting a bit more because of how heavy last week was, but that might be kind of like their plan for now to like do a heavy, then a soft, heavy, then a soft to kind of give people a break until they really want to push forward, punch forward into the plot, but overall, it was really good. I really liked the, um, the jokes all landed. The character work was great, dialogue was good, story was good, the fight choreography was great, transformations. I would like to see more of the avatar changes more more um, happening more consistently, but for the most part, I really enjoy the show, and it's it's still definitely holding its place as one of my favorites, Sentai. Absolutely one of my favorites. Um, but that'll do it for today's episode, but let me know in the comments below what did you guys think of this week's episode. Love it, hate it in the middle, whatever. Favorite moments, favorite jokes, things like that. Um, what are your theories going forward on Murasame and uh, all the other mysteries within the show? Um, I love to read about those, and you guys have your different comments in there. Not a ton of comments all the time. I, I mean, I can't make you comment. But uh, I can thank you guys for subscribing, for liking, for watching the video, all that good stuff. And as always, stay hooked on Henshin's. And I, or not Henshin's, oh my god. Stay hooked on Heroes. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Don't 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 but all those don't 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 but a going. Don't 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 but all those stop the word.